वेलकम टू एपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर कृष्णेंदु रे टीचिंग इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंशियंट इंडियन हिस्ट्री एंड कल्चर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कलकत्ता कोलकाता टुडे वी आर कंसर्न विथ हॉर्पन सिविलाइजेशन एंड इकोनॉमी अंडर द पेपर इकोनॉमिक हिस्ट्री ऑफ इंडिया Harpan civilization and economy particularly to be read because of the fact that this civilization is the earliest civilization of the country and we know that the people of this civilization developed highly sophisticated urban civilization produced agricultural goods developed industrial skills connected or maintained trading linkages with both inland and outside india countries outside places so this is how the study of this civilization becomes important to us therefore the learning objectives may be taken note of at a glance so that we can understand actually what we are going to learn from this paper so let us see the aims of the study it aims to study the economic aspects of harappan civilization wise agriculture industries trade commerce and transportation weights and measures life of the trader of the harappan civilization urban centers and its economic significance summary introduction archaeological discoveries from the indian subcontinent and scholarly studies point out that humans have made the land and surrounding conditions suitable for living through ages they produced different things necessary for living archaeological excavations from bagor chobdani mohagora mehergarh etc enlighten us humans have gradually domesticated animals established their habitats produced potteries food developed agriculture agricultural artisanal and technological skills possibly business transactions and administrative authority people carry on endeavors in order to ensure easy and comfortable life by improving their surrounding conditions it continues through ages from one generation to another the mehergarh people were no exception they they prepared the ground in which the well known urban civilization gradually emerged we find it to have taken roots at mohenjodaro and harappa alexander cunningham went to the site of harappa and got a few seals from there dwaram shahani conducted excavations first at harappa and recovered the remains of this urban civilization Rakhaldesh Bandopadhyay got its remains at Mohenjo-daro in 1922. Since then, many archaeologists, John Marshall, Rafik Mughal, J. M. Kinnor, Sherin Ratnagar, Richard M. Mido, etc., have provided us with significant insights about the life and multiple activities of the Harappans. Now, the remains of this civilization are. available from the indus valley area the pakistan punjab balochistan and jammu punjab haryana western uttar pradesh rajasthan gujarat etc vast as this civilization with harappa as the first excavated site so its nomenclature has been preferred from indus civilization to harappan civilization we learn from scholarly estimate that 40 lakh persons lived in the harappan civilization 
it goes without saying that one of their primary necessities was food and its availability necessitated production, therefore agricultural production. Let us learn about agriculture. We have excavations from different places, say for example, Rangpur, Lothal, Kalimangan, Banwali, Bhawalpur, etc. From where we have learned that the people of this civilization produced different agricultural crops like lentils, mustard, bazda, wheat, cotton, millets, etc. They also used plough. Interestingly, we have terracotta models of plough also. So, it, it appears to us that they in the remote past, almost pre european level, the people knew how to farrow or cultivate the land with the help of the plough. They acquired the knowledge, the use of plough certainly, otherwise they could not use it. One interesting point is that they knew how to preserve agricultural crops as we today also preserve our food in granaries. They also built up granaries and we have brick built granaries at Haroppa, Mohenjadaro and that they preserved their food like uh, wheat, barley, husk grains in the granaries is supported by excavations. They also knew animal breeding. Animals like goat, cattle, sheep, ox. These animals' bones have been discovered from different sites in the Indian Valley civilization. It is interesting to note that as we, we are helped today by the rains, they also received the help of the rains in the cultivation of the agricultural crops. They also used wells as we today use. It is interesting to note that they always try to use groundwater for the purpose of irrigation. Naturally, so far we have learned that Horpans developed agriculture and agricultural crops so much so they went to the extent of preserving agricultural crops. So when they ensured the surplus of production, particularly agricultural production, they necessitated the exchange of the surplus production. And this leads us to think of whether they produced other things also. Let us see, because in this connection we have to uh, take note of the fact, fundamental fact, that in any economic history study, we have to keep in mind three major things, major points. Number one, production. Number two, distribution or transportation. Number three, consumption. They produced agricultural food, but People cannot rely only on agricultural food, agricultural crops. They also needed, as we need today, industrial products also. So let us go to or switch over to industries, what their industries were. Let us see that point. Regarding industries, we find that the Horpans developed their stone blade industries qualitatively. Probably 
there were craftsmen who produced such blades. We have information about the stone quarries, that is, the as we today find mines or extract different ores from the mines, even stone also. Similarly, they also they had also stone quarries, and on these stones there were workers who used or practiced their skills and produced different utilitarian items as we have the workers settlements in Sindh. It is very very interesting to note. Harappa people also knew the use of bronze and copper. That is they used the art of metallurgy. This is very clear from this discovery. We have bronze goods wise axes, shizels, knives, stones. You please note that these things were very very useful in their daily life as we also use these things in our daily lives. And copper articles such as fish hooks, saws, razors, utensils etc. as we also today use saws in cutting trees we use utensils, they also used. Remember one thing, they were also the people who passed their lives as we pass their lives. We have also, we also require basic or fundamental necessities of life. Similarly, exactly in a similar way, they also needed these fundamental things. The only difference is this, remember these points, only fundamental difference thing is that the modality. We also use utensils. They also used into utensils. They also, they used copper utensils. We also, we use other metal utensils, but we, we use utensils. Herein lies the interest of studying the economic history, how they passed there, how they used their different things in different, in order to suit the different purposes of their daily lives. So, in addition to these goods, we have bronze made animal figures. Again, please note the point, bronze made animal figures. This is absolutely important point to be noted that they knew the art of producing aesthetic or art object in metal as we also produce not only animal figures, particularly buffalo and elephant, chariot-like carriage, puller oxen from Daimabad. We have these excellent or exotic goods as we have different replica of different animals and other things also in metals and other medium they also used, they also produced, they could also produce such exotic goods in their society in order certainly to feed or scatter to the taste of other people, maybe a few. The purpose of these bronze things not clear. Just now, I, as I have said to you, that they might have produced these bronze objects for the few, maybe, but we are not sure. Still, we may guess here 
because of the fact that we have such bronze objects. At least it appears that they were skilled enough. As I told you just now, the art of metallurgy to produce such goods. In regard to this melting of metals, we have slag, copper ores and crucibles from Mohenjadaro. They were also skilled in the making of beads. Another in interesting thing. In our days also, we use our female fellows use beads and other different useful or precious stones as ornamental objects they also used they also used beads and in the making of beads they had the mastery of production as we see a bead maker shop found at Bonwali. A bead making workshop was excavated at Lothal. We have steatite, copper, gold, shell made beads also. So students, by now you have become clear of the fact that in the sector of economy, particularly Harpan economy, with which we are concerned today, they used to produce not only life-saving articles that is consuming with food items, but also the items that were suited to the taste of the people. Because in this context, we should keep in mind that human beings live at two stages. They live physically, for which they need food, shelter and clothes, as well as they also need, they also live at the mental stage, for which they produce certain things which are very, very pleasing or present to their taste. Likewise, or rather the Horpans were also no exception. They were also people, as I told you. They produced such exotic or aesthetic or art objects which may be or certainly the case not for all but for some. However, so far as the industries are concerned, we have other information also. Let us go to that. The Horpans developed potteries. These were storage jars, dishes, bowls, containers, Household potteries like saddle corns, pounders have also been reported. The potteries were fired at kiln. The kiln has been found. Crafts produced at Chanudaro, bangles produced at Kalibangan. Students, in this case also, we should keep in mind that the potteries they produced, the harpans produced, were of daily use as we also in our country today use saddle corns. If you look at village people, they also use saddle corns, terracotta pots, earthen pots. Still, even the urban people also use terracotta pots or earthen pots in on auspicious occasions still today. So similarly they also use these terracotta or earthen objects in their daily lives. Not only this, the people manufacture the jewelries of gold as we also manufacture jewelries of gold. Silver 
reported from Mohenjo-daro, Lothal and Harappa. The gold made ornaments included bracelets, armlets, necklaces, foot wheel and hand operated wheels were used in the making of potteries. Both fired and mud bricks were manufactured and used. Kills were used to produce the fired bricks. So students, by now we have learned a lot about the Harappan's agricultural, even non-agricultural production. I think you are clear. Let us go to another part of the Harappan economy, trade and commerce. Naturally, when people produce surplus, they need its exchange with others. And in this context, trade and commerce entered. There were some people who produced food, manufactured utilitarian goods, and some consumed those goods. Naturally, the movement of these goods was necessary from one place to another. Thus, we enter into how the people used to maintain trading linkages. I think you are clear by this time how trade and commerce developed and why it is it was developed with the people of other countries, other places. We have information about the routes they had used for their trading interactions with others. The people from the Karachi region reached Mohenjadaro by following the west bank of the Indus river and from there they went to Chanudaro by crossing the Indus river. In this connection we should keep in mind that when people carry on trade they use routes or rather roads. Similarly Harupansa are also using roads. Let us see. A road connected Sindh with Kutch and Kathiawar in Gujarat. Bhawalpur, Central Indus and Rajasthan were connected by both land and riverine routes. Sindh and East Punjab were also linked by road. Puneiform inscriptions from Mesopotamia provide that ships from Magan, Meluha and Tilmul or Dilmun went to the port of Agate. The Harappan traders went to Mesopotamia. The same cuneiform inscriptions also refer to a sheep owning trader from Meluha and a Meluhan settlement. Magan is scholarly located in the Makran coast or Oman. Just a few minutes back we have learned that different places were connected by roads. Now we come to see that some ports were located and where they were located this we will have to know. Let us see. Meluha located in the lower Indus country area. Tilmun or Dilmun identified with Bahrain in the Persian Gulf region. The identifications are debated. The Harpans participated in the long distance sea trade. This is supported by the watercrafts as depicted on their seals. Harpan artifacts from Bactria known. Harpans might have had trading linkages with iron. Naturally, trade in connection with trade, we should also discuss transportation. Let us come to this point. Transportation. In this connection, in this connection, we learn Harappans used carriages. This inferred on the basis of the model crafts carts found. They used the two wheeled carts. Probably they also used four wheeled carts. 
bronze and clay model carts from Channudharu known. Water crafts also used. Let us see the weights and measures that the Harpans had used in their transactions. Weights and measures. They maintained uniform weights and measures. Their basic unit corresponded to 13.63 grams. The heaviest weight was 10.9 kilograms. Naturally, we may have some idea about how a trader passed there his life. Let us see the life of the trader of the Harupan civilization. The remains of a house at Banuali found. It accommodated a room after what may be called a drawing room of today. The floor of the room was paved with mud bricks, weights, measures and seals found from the house. Big jars found embedded in the floor of the house. There was a toilet in the house. The toilet was fitted with a wash basin. The basin was placed on a height. The basin fitted at a corner of the room. It was placed beside a drain through which the waste water went out. The structure described as a residence of the well-to-do trader. Students, it's very much like today as in our days also we find many such well-to-do persons rooms these fittings. So when these fittings are available in a room, naturally we may infer that those persons were wealthy enough to consume such things. So similarly, the Horpan trader also developed his daily life and went up to this extent when they used such fittings in their rooms. Maybe we have one excavated evidence, but it indicates, it provides indications towards what we have just now told you regarding the oil to do traders house, residential house. So let us come to, naturally, they developed for their, perhaps for their business or trading purposes or other purposes maybe, the urban centers. In our days also we have urban centers, we have metropolitan cities. Similarly, they also developed cities or urban centers. What were those? Let us see. Urban centers, two major points in the urban centers of the Harpan civilization. One is urban layout pattern. The other is the hierarchy of urban centers. Mohanjadaro, 200 hectares of land and Harappa, 150 hectares of land, well known urban centers. From our childhood days, we are known to these two cities. Now, 85,000 people lived in Mohanjadaro. 65,000 people used to live in Harappa. We are told by scholars. Two distinct parts of the Harappan urban center was the upper city and the lower town. Upper city called Citadel. Public buildings were situated in the Citadel sector. People lived in their residential structure in the lower part. Students, in, at this point, we should keep in mind that how disciplined they were, what type of discipline they maintained in organizing the urban center. In one part, public buildings. In another part, public houses, their residential houses, 
they built up their residential houses where no public buildings as yet found. So this is the two fundamental parts of the urban center. Usually we see, but we have some exceptions also. But usually this is seen. So let us go to the citadel sector. What we get? The citadel sector situated in the western part of the city. Its shape was rectangular, noticed in Mohenjo-daro, Horoppa, Lothal and Kalimangan. The great bath, the galleries and the assembly hall, well-known public buildings in the citadel sector of the city. In the great bath, there was a rectangular tank with two flights of staircases. The elite class of people used this bath. Near the bath, the large granary was situated. A pillar hall was situated in the southern part of the citadel. The hall had 20 pillars. It occupied 750 square meter area. This hall was used for the assembly of persons for ceremonies. Now, let us go to some exceptions in the urban layout pattern. For example, Dholabira. Dholabira divided up into three sectors, the upper sector, the middle sector and the lower sector. Students, please note this point. Here are no two parts, here are three parts. Dholabira covered the area of 60 hectares of land. The citadel sector of Kalimangan was divided up into two parts, whereas the northern and southern sectors. The citadel sector of Lothal was located to the southeast of the lower sector of Lothal. This is an unusual urban layout. Let us go to the lower town. The lower town, a residential house with covered area of 300 square meter known. It had a courtyard. Around the courtyard there were 27 rooms. The house was situated in Mohenjadaro. Most of the residential houses in the lower town area had a courtyard. The living rooms were built up around the courtyard. 700 wells for about 2,000 residential houses in the lower sector of Mohenjadaro found. The Harpoon drainage system was excellent and hygienic. Students, here we also take note of the fact that they also used covered drains as we today use. How hygienic they were. Just imagine. The Harpoon drainage system was excellent and hygienic. The main drains were covered. These were connected with the drains from residential houses. This shows Harpoon's sense of public hygiene and municipal organization. There were roads, streets and lanes in the lower sectors of Mahanjadaro, Harappa, Chanudaro, Kalimangan. Recent excavations in Gujarat show the spread of Harappan urbanism to other areas. Students, by now, whatever we have learned regarding the Harappan economic activities, including their urban centers or economic linkages, we may now have a summary of those things. The people developed a highly urban civilization with strong sense of hygiene and municipal organization. They maintained a disciplined and organized city life. They developed a good communication with others. They acquired skills in the production of agricultural goods and industrial articles. Even they knew the art of preservation. Students, by now, we have learned a lot about the Harappan's economic activities relating to agriculture, trade and commerce, industries, etc. etc. If you want to know more about this, then 
I would recommend the e-text. Thank you.